maturity over Mar-a-Lago, normalcy over negativity. We need men with chest over men with breast. All right, guys, so we gotta talk about the new leader of the Democrats in the House, Hakeem Jeffries, who I have deemed the slightly less corny version of Cory Booker, who is a senator from New York in the Senate, a Democratic senator from New York in the Senate. Um, however, the more I hear this guy talk, okay, the more I hear him speak, the more I'm like, you know, he actually might be a more cornier version than uh, Cory Booker, okay? And, and that is really hard to do. It is really hard to be a cornier version of Cory Booker, okay? Because that guy is as corny as it gets. As Langston Hughes let, wrote, oh, let America be America again. The land that never has been yet, but yet must be the land where everyone is free. Oh, yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me, but I swear this oath, America will be. That is the story of how you got to this desk. You and I and everyone here, generations of folk who came here and said, America, I'm Irish, you may say, no, Irish or dogs need to apply, but I'm going to show this country that I can be free here. I can make this country love me as much as I love it. Chinese Americans first forced into mere slave labor, building our railroads, connecting our country, saw the ugliest of America, but they were going to build their home here and say, America, you may not love me yet, but I'm going to make this nation live up to its promise and hope. Guys, reporters are calling. You're tackling each other in the Capitol? We've been through this before. You have to stop tackling each other. All right. Then we'll just tackle big ag consolidation. But again, Hakeem Jeffries is coming for the title of the corniest guy in Congress. And this speech right here that he gave to, to Congress after Kevin McCarthy was elected Speaker of the House really is one of the cringiest speeches I've ever heard in my life. Maybe besides the, the speech that he gave in which he uh, basically quoted lyrics from the Notorious B.I.G. In, in Congress. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and Pepper and Heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. Every Saturday, Rap Attack, Mr. Magic, Molly Mall. Those were the words of the late, great, notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls is gone, but he will never be forgotten. Rest in peace, notorious B.I.G. Uh, that may have been the second corniest moment, but this right here definitely takes the cake. Uh, so I, I don't know if he calls this a diss or what. I'm not sure exactly what he thought that he was doing here. Um, but the delusion, uh, coming from the Democrats is really just amazing. <laughs> so without further ado, I want to go ahead and, and roll a clip of, of this speech that he gave that I, I just found to be just really, really insane and shows you guys that Democrats are not in touch with reality. Roll the clip. House Democrats will always put American values over autocracy, benevolence over bigotry, the Constitution over the cult, democracy over demagogues, economic opportunity over extremism, freedom over fascism, governing over gaslighting, hopefulness over hatred, inclusion over isolation, justice over judicial overreach, knowledge over kangaroo courts, liberty over limitation, maturity over Mar-a-Lago, normalcy over negativity, opportunity over obstruction, people over politics, quality of life issues over QAnon, reason over racism, substance over slander, 
triumph over tyranny, understanding over ugliness, voting rights over voter suppression, working families over the well-connected, xenial over xenophobia. Yes, we can over you can't do it, and zealous representation over zero-sum confrontation. Yeah, so discount Obama <laughs> and a more cornier version of Cory Booker at this point now. Um, I, I just cannot believe that this man went up in Congress and actually said that, right? I mean, this guy said governing over gaslighting when that whole speech was nothing but gaslighting, right? Pretending like the Democrat Party is not a party of bigotry, okay? He said benevolence over bigotry. All the Democrat do is promote bigotry in their party, particularly towards whites, right? And straight people and men. Right. He talks about justice over judicial overreach. <laughs> what? Um, this is the same party that wants to expand the Supreme Court. If that's not judicial overreach, I don't know what is uh, normalcy over negativity. Uh, this is the same party that's always telling us how terrible America is. Right. America is such a bad country. It's systemically racist. It is an evil country. <laughs> right. Uh, reason over racism. Again, we know how racist Democrats are against, against whites and also uh, any non-white person that does not agree with Democrats. If you're a Republican, uh, they call you a white supremacist. They say you're not really a minority. You're not really black. You're not really Latino. Uh, look at George uh, Santos. Right? <laughs> they're basically trying to say this guy is white. OK, he's white. This is what they're saying. Before I let you go, you've been one of the harshest uh, critics of uh, fellow New York Congressman, freshman Congressman George Santos. You even introduced an act named after him uh, to ban lying on the campaign trail. Uh, Santos now appears to have perhaps flashed a, a white power symbol while voting yesterday. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, apparently uh, George Santos is not only Latino and black, but he's also white now. Um, uh, he's just an utter embarrassment. Um, he, he has no business serving in Congress. It diminishes the institution to have him seated, to have him sworn in. Uh, and so I've called on him to resign. Yeah. So they're calling a gay Latino. And I, I guess he's black, too. Right. I guess he's mixed with black. I don't know. Uh, they're calling a gay mixed Latino white because he threw up the OK symbol. <laughs> right. Or he had body language that could be attributed to the fact that he is gay. Right. So. Uh, he could have just been uh, voting in a very feminine way, but leave it to Democrats to interpret it in the completely wrong way to try to push this narrative that, again, this guy is not a real Latino or that he's not really gay or whatever, uh, simply because he is Republican. Again, uh, these are the people that claim that they have benevolence over bigotry, right, according to Hockey Jeffries. Again, one of the most ridiculous speeches I've ever heard in my life. And, you know, guys, I heard the perfect response to this speech, and it did not come from a Republican in Congress, even though this guy should be a Republican in Congress. Um, unfortunately, he's not. But I hope that one day he runs because he definitely should. And this guy's name is Pastor John Amenchuku, who I met at Turning Point. And I also did a video about before I met at Turning Point. It was kind of cool to meet him in person in which he destroyed... Uh, a local school board in Raleigh, I believe, Wake County, uh, over their focus on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, over actually educating children when our children can't even read, but they're focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, spending millions of dollars on that, again, when kids can't read. But he gave, again, the perfect response to uh, Hakeem Jeffries, and I wish that there were Republicans in Congress that were as smart and articulate uh, and as policy focused as uh, this pastor right here. So without further ado, go ahead and roll the clip. Hello, my name is Pastor John Amanchukwu, and in response to Representative Hakeem Jeffries' speech, I would like to say that we need reason over rhyming. We need men with chest over men with breast. Fathers over reparations, biblical justice over social justice, diversity of thought over racialized social constraint. We need an appreciation for the unborn and not a devaluation of life. We need parental rights and education rather than the demotion of parental 
oversight. We need education and not indoctrination. We need the freedom of school choice and not the shackles of a one size fits all educational model. We need a healthy love for our flag and not a glorifying of domestic terrorists. We need secured borders and not a defenseless nation. We need to send money to U.S. veterans instead of $45 billion to Ukraine. We need a president that reacts and responds instead of one that ducks and hides. We need free markets and not free stuff. We need lower gas prices and less gas lighting. We need to serve God and not be demagogues. We don't need lap dogs or Hunter Biden's laptops. We need Jesus. We need Jesus today. We need Jesus tomorrow. And we need Jesus forever. Yeah. So if you guys want to check him out, uh, he actually started a YouTube channel uh, at Rev Wu Truth. Okay. Uh, John Ammon Chukwu. I definitely recommend you guys check him out. He's going to be making a whole lot of great content on his channel. Um, and I, I, I thought that his response to Hakeem Jeffries was <laughs> perfect. Okay. Again, I, I wish that a Republican in Congress would give that type of response to Hakeem Jeffries, because unlike Hakeem Jeffries, uh, pastor, uh, Amin uh, he actually threw in some policy in there, right? Not these, you know, vague platitudes. Uh, he talked about school choice, <laughs> right? He talked about not sending money to Ukraine. He actually threw real policy uh, that we should be pursuing in this country in his response. And I love that, right? I love it. Um, I, again, I, I just wish that we had Republicans that were um, as articulate as, as the pastor here. But uh, in regards to Hakeem Jeffries, um, is that the best that Democrats have, <laughs> right? A con man, right? A, 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 a smooth-talking, uh, corny discount Obama, right? Cornier version of uh, Cory Booker, right? If that's the best the Democrats got, then, hey, you know, I, I feel good about Hakeem Jeffries being the leader of the Democrats. However, I don't feel that good about it because Kevin McCarthy, right, is leading the Republicans and Kevin McCarthy is not good. So uh, that's the only thing that, that kind of does uh, take away from the fact that, again, Democrats have a guy that really is, in my opinion, uh, one of the most cringe people in, in Congress leading them. Uh, he is much more cringe than Nancy Pelosi. But, hey, maybe uh, it will make for some good content. Um, however, I, I do know one thing that he can do is that he is good at kind of deflecting criticism uh, from the media, right? And and that's something that he is really good at doing. Um, I will give him that. But other than that, um, this guy is not all that impressive, right? He's not all that impressive okay uh he's a one-trick pony he's a slick talker from new york um and I, again if the republicans had a better leader right um then i would feel much better about it but hey as we just saw there classic performance from the democrats uh empty platitudes and just <laughs> insanity right and, and delusion so let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace